In order to see messages in the Friendly Chat app, we need code that reads from the real-time database. We'll do this in the main activity class. First, you'll take your messages database reference and add an event listener that reacts to the database changes in real time. Then, within that event listener, you'll add the code that correctly handles adding new messages to the app's UI. Let's go back to Android Studio and see how it's done. In mainactivity.java, we already have a Firebase database instance. And we also have a database reference, which, if you scroll down, you'll see that reference is referencing the messages location. And this is the exact reference that you used a moment ago when you worked on writing to the database. Now you want to read from the exact same location, so you can reuse this object. To be able to read, though, you need to attach a child event listener object to this reference. This will allow you to listen and have your code triggered whenever changes occur on the messages node. Here, let me show you. We're going to start by making a child event listener. So I'm going to scroll up to the top, and right here I'm going to add another instance variable. The type will be child event listener, and I'll just name it m child event listener. Now I'm going to scroll all the way down and on create, and I'm going to put this right under the clicks listener for writing to the database. I'm going to instantiate a new child event listener. OK, now when you do that, you automatically extend it with an anonymous class, which has all these methods that you need to override. I'm going to clean this up a little bit so that we can look at it. So now you can see these five different methods. Let's talk a little bit about each of these. The first is onChildAdded. This is the method that gets called whenever a new message is inserted into the messages list. Importantly, it's also triggered for every child message in the list when the listener is first attached. This means that when you attach your listener, which we're going to do very shortly, for every child message that already exists in the list, the code in this method will be called. The next method is onChildChanged. This gets called when the contents of an existing message gets changed. OnChildRemoved would get called when an existing message is deleted. Next is OnChildMoved. OnChildMoved would get called if one of our messages changed position in the list. And finally, we have OnCancelled. OnCancelled indicates that some sort of error occurred when you were trying to make changes. Typically, if this is being called, it means that you don't have permission to read the data. OK, now that I have my listener created, I can add it to my database reference. I'm scrolling below the instantiation code, taking my database reference, and calling add child event listener, passing it the child event listener that I just created. To summarize this code here, the reference defines what exactly I'm listening to. And this listener object here defines what exactly will happen to the data. Now, because I'm just listening to the messages location, these events will only trigger when one of the children of the messages node changes. If, for example, some other data is added, which is outside of the messages node, the listener would not be triggered. OK, now looking back at our code, this listener is attached and everything's great, but we're not actually triggering anything to happen. All of these methods are blank. For this simple chat app, we're only going to implement on child added, and this will be so that we can see the new messages when we add them in the app. In our chat app, you can't delete, move, or modify messages after they've been created. And remember that on child added is called for existing children when the listener is first attached, and then for any future children added when the listener is still active. OK, so if we look at the on child added method, we see that we get this data snapshot object passed in. A data snapshot contains data from the Firebase database at a specific location at the exact time the listener is triggered. In this case, the data snapshot will always contain the message that has been added. We can use the data snapshots get value method to get the data of the new message. The get value method can take a parameter, which is a class. By passing in this parameter, the code will deserialize the message from the database into our plain friendly message object. This works because our plain friendly message object has the exact fields that match the fields that are in our messages object in the database. We see here that we have a text field and a name field. And over here, our messages have the exact same named text field and name field. OK, so this will get deserialized to a friendly message object. So we can save that object. And then finally, we can add this new friendly message object to our adapter. And with that, we added a listener to our messages list. And when a new message is added, it triggers on child added, which in turn takes the newly added message, converts it into a friendly message object, and finally adds it to our adapter. And this will display it in our list view. By the way, you can also check out the official documentation on retrieving Firebase data if you ever need a refresher.